right, let's get Lee, Lee St. Clair. Get Miss Lee in here. Lee St. Clair. Miss Lee, hop on, Lee. Miss Lee St. Clair, hop on, Lee. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Lee. How are you, Miss Lee? I'm good. How are you? I'm still the same Black woman exclusive. And okay. I would just say time spent over at Clubhouse and this app, there's a lot of hate between Black people, people that are melanated. So I do, I'm very for reparations. I mean, personally, I have no clue where I'm from, but originally Caribbean and African. So coming from that mix, I have a lot of love for Caribbean people and African people. So when I'm in the middle and I see them fighting each other, it's a bit heartbreaking because where do we start fixing the problems from? Because the truth is the white people or other people still see us as all black before we start to mm -hmm. speak, before we start to introduce ourselves, where our nationalities, where we're from, if we're American or we're Euro Euro European. So that is a very big problem that I'm currently facing with merging or what I say Pan-Africanism. Where does it start from? How do we start to heal from within? Our community is falling apart. I've Over the cu um, couple of two, three days, there have been rooms that have been showing, um, they've been insulting each other. So Black Americans, Africans, and just a whole mix of people fighting each other. and. It's heartbreaking because this this whole initiative was done out of love for black women because I realized that black women don't have a way to they don't have a space to be fully centered or even um cared for. And when we think I did tell a couple, I told um there's someone called Jay Blanco and I told him he was asking me why did I focus on black women? And I did say, I said, I mean I am a black woman, so I, that was where the love came from. So why wouldn't you focus on black men and then we can merge communities together? I have another friend, Issa Kari, he's handling black Twitter. And even we are faced with the same problems because we are moderators, handlers of these communities. And we see the, you know, the back and forth between the globe of black people. There is no love. We're all black. We're all going to be called niggas. And I don't know why we can't focus on the actual problem, which is creating strength, economical strength in our communities, financial strength in our communities. You don't have to move back to Af Africa. You don't have to move back to the Caribbean. But how do we start to fix this shit? Because we're all suffering and it's really burning down. Tell me why Mark Zuckerberg is building a 10,000 foot acre in Hawaii. Another Chinese billionaire has bought about 500 acres of land, I think, in Oregon or somewhere. It is just too much. Where do we start healing from? And, and that's something I battle with because now I am British, but every black woman is in my community and the community I handle. But I, I treat all of them the same because I'm obsessed with black women. I love black women. I love the black community. But what, where do we fix these problems from? Right. Who's that? Sorry, I'm 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 gonna curse a bit. Who's this fucking weirdo called Stonos Stonos Joker? You're a loser. Let me tell you. Now, where are you reading from? Where are you seeing these people? Oh, sorry. I'm just saying. I don't know. I can screenshot it and put it there. It's Stoner Joker something. Some anime weirdo. Honestly. Okay. Now, where, where are you? Are you are not here? Weirdo. Where am I speaking from? No, no. Where where are you seeing these people? Because you're addressing some people, and I don't even know where you're seeing. Oh, they're, them right on now. This, they're on this page. I don't know. I don't. I think it's a bit. Um, it's different for you. As I'm sure it's different for everyone else. I think it's just around someone. It's close to someone called. Um, uh, it's actually close to a mother of mine. Um, Adora. So honorable Adora. So it's close. The person is close to her. I don't know where that person is. Honestly, I don't even know who they are. Okay. But anyway, okay. that's you're, the you're gist of it. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank. Thank you so much. I, I'll. Address, I'll address that. Okay. Yeah. I'm. I'm had to get her off because she. She's kind of a chatty person. So you know, you you start talking and she'll just chat over you. I can tell that type. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. This is the where people talk about the healing. How come we can't heal? Here's the thing. Um, foundational Black Americans are reacting to 
people from the diaspora who come over here and show nothing but disrespect. The reality is a lot of these non-FBA groups for years have been coming over here and there's been this underlying disrespect for foundational Black Americans. This whole thing where your parents tell you, stay away from the Akata and all of that, this is real. That's been going on for years. Y'all sit here and act like it wasn't going down. It was going down. So number one, y'all weren't honest. So you've established a dishonest um, relationship with us. We were helping you guys get over here. Let's be very clear. Any immigrant over here, especially if you're black, you have a foundational black American to thank for it. The only reason you're here is because we were stomping for you to get here in large numbers. Y'all can sit there and give it up for white mommy and white daddy, but it was us pressing white mommy and white daddy. And again, we've sat here, we propped up Africa. We've done everything we could do to try to reach out and have some kind of camaraderie. We've had Pan-African movements. It's been foundational Black Americans pushing the Pan-African movement, not even the Caribbeans. Marcus Garvey failed in the Caribbean. Let's keep it a buck. I'm not going to let that go. Marcus Garvey repeatedly failed in the Caribbean to get a Pan-African movement going. The Pan-African movement was not in the Caribbean. It was here. Foundational Black Americans were trying to link up and show a camaraderie with Black folks in Africa and, and the Caribbean. We were the ones doing this one-sided Pan-Africanism, one-sided helping and stomping for the diaspora. It's been one-sided. South Africa, all of the independent movements that's in Africa, we were some of the ones who were the progenitors of those things, kicking it off making noise, going over there to help set it off. You understand? So there's been a one-sided Pan-Africanism. We've been having the Azra Kwesi's and um, the Anthony Browders and Renoko Rashidi's and people going over there, bringing folks to do African tours to connect with the brothers and sisters there. It's been so one-sided. We've always tried to reach out and connect with brothers and sisters over there and get something going on. And in return, we don't get no dual citizenship anywhere unless we have a gazillion dollars. Um, nobody's stomping for us to repatriate or even get dual citizenship over there. They're not, there's no grassroots movement of, for that over there. And when we go over there asking, people start twiddling their thumbs. So there's been this one-sided relationship between foundational Black Americans and people in the African diaspora. And truth be told, there's been one group benefiting from this relationship. That's you guys. Foundation Black Americans, and we just realized, we, we, we came to the realization that we're not benefiting from Black folks in the diaspora at all. We just we 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 came to that realization collectively. Now I've known this for a while, but we stood up and looked around and said, "Wait a minute, we up here doing all of this fighting and and campaigning for folks and trying to build some kumbaya black global unity, and we're sitting here with all types of programs and our little resources are going to these people and they're coming over here, flocking over here with lint in their pocket and eating off the tax dollars that we're helping them get, and they're going to the HBCUs and." It's things that we fought for. So there, everybody's getting fat off of us fighting for them. And we get zero benefit, family. I want y'all to let that sink in. Honestly, we don't benefit from no immigrants. African, Caribbean, we don't benefit from them. To be honest. So... We're looking at this thing now like, why are we sitting up here caping so hard? If we don't cape, what are we going to lose? So there was a shaming thing where we're going to get shamed for not caping for black folks in the diaspora. But we're like, no, we ain't, we ain't. that shame thing ain't going to work no more. We don't lose anything for being critical 
of your anti-FBA disposition. Because not only do we not benefit, it got to the point now where some of these non-FBA people come in and get in our mix, and they're actually undermining us. So not only do we benefit, we don't benefit, these people come around us and start sabotaging us in many cases. Not all of you. I'm not saying all of you do that. I'm not saying all of you do that at all, but way too many. You understand? And then when we see elected officials who are non-FBA that we sat here and prop up, and then they turn around and not do anything for us, and they do a bunch of stuff for other immigrant groups, that makes our antennas go up. And we're saying, hey, enough of this. Right now, it's all about foundational Black Americans and what we should get. And a lot of the tether class, they got upset with that and start talking about xenophobic and you niggas are divisive. Shaming tactics. And those shaming tactics don't work. They're not working. And basically, a lot of these people are saying what they say privately. The cicadas are lazy and whoop de whoop and then we're calling them out. See, they weren't used to us calling them out. We let a lot of people get away with disrespect for so long. So now we're stopping the disrespect. I've been on these tethers bumpers for over a decade. Now everybody else is kind of catching up. But we're, di we're, we're not allowing any disrespect from tethers, foreigners, nobody. Nobody can come here and say one single solitary thing negative about a foundational black American because most of these people come from failed homelands. I'm talking about Africa, Europe, Asia, all of these people. Your homelands weren't really popping like that. That's why you came here. Nobody's at liberty to say anything about a foundational black American. I don't want to hear about no crime, um, laziness or whatever, because you go to your homeland. It's a bucket of filth. Y'all not building anything over there. You're fleeing left and right. You're not at liberty to say anything to us about anything. We should have been checking these people a long time ago. And that's what we're doing. We're not allowing any disrespect. And if people are out here um, living in shanty towns, you can't come over here and say anything about a, a black American whatsoever. That's where we are with it right now. Yeah. Ain't that right, Nathaniel? Even the Europeans, y'all can't say nothing. Like Ireland and Scotland, ain't, they're not really popping like that. When they then you're talking about some castles, stop it. Yeah, you got some castles all far off in the boondock somewhere that's abandoned that ain't popping no more. Most of the communities ain't about, they don't have a bunch of castles and stuff. It's little musty ass cottages and villages where y'all sitting over there eating mayonnaise and fish and chips. All right. Let's see who else we got in here, because we got a bunch of folks in here. All right. We got a bunch of people up in here. Don't give me a thumbs down, Nathaniel. You know I'm telling the truth. All right. Let's get um. Hokage, South African cat. Hokage, hop in, man. Mr. Hokage. Hop on in, brother. And we are in here heavy. Yo, know, I just want to know, you brought all this heat for Africans, but I want to know, as American, Black Americans, what have you guys built? What society have you built? What currency do you have? What language do you have to claim that you are foundational? Okay, we built this whole nation. We're the foundation of the building of this nation. So whenever you want to flee, and you probably can't afford to flee here, um, we built the nation from the ground up, sir. Also, also, currency. Well, we, we have to use the U.S. dollar because that's the recognized currency, just like it's recognized over there in your homeland. They use the U.S. dollar over there, too, and the white man's money. You don't have a currency in South Africa. Also, we had a language called Tutnese, a language that was spoke and taught secretively, and we still keep it a secret from tethers and white supremacists. Um, and one thing about our culture, we have a culture of not fleeing, sir. That's the most phenomenal But because part of most our of you don't have passports at the age of 30 and beyond, you don't have passports, so how can you flee without a passport? Um, uh, we, we, I have a passport, yeah, you, and a lot do, of us do. Most, of, most black Americans and, do not. 
because we don't have a desire to flee. That's it's not we about don't have fleeing, a desire. It's about exploring the world it and learning fleeing. about the world. It's, it's fleeing. No, 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 no. It's fleeing. See, we, we don't have a desire to flee. That's why a lot of us don't have passports, because we're not running nowhere. We're going to stay where we are and build. We're not, we don't want to go over there and, and see your poverty. But what have you built? So a lot of, Tell uh, me what so, you built. Uh, so we built this whole country, sir. We built the, we the foundation. As slaves. Yeah. You had no we choice built, in the matter. Right. Right, yeah. and and it still got built by us. So what that doesn't change that it got built. But by what us. have you built at your own volition? What have you built today? See, as free men, what have you built in it? And you can point towards and say we are we're, we're in global. We're in global white supremacy, sir. We built more than you built over there. Well, we still built it, under apartheid, under under colonization. What's your point? Black people still built South Africa. What's your point, sir? Sir, you haven't built anything over there. I've been there, sir. You haven't built anything. Who do you, you, who you have do you no think, community. Where do you think the hands came from to build all this infrastructure you see in South Africa? Yes, it was under, you know, the the rulership of the white man, but who built it? Same as you say that you built it as slaves, we built it as sir, as 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 as, 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 as we, we, colonization. Sir, sir, y'all live in shanty towns over y'all there. Y'all live sir. in the, the ghetto, y'all live in the projects over there. No, we don't. Yes, do. No, we don't. Yes, do. And the project and the pro and the projects are better than them shanty towns. And all of us don't live in no projects. Not all of us live in shanty black towns. People, most black people live in nice middle class homes, working class homes. Most of us don't live in the projects, sir. All of you live in the shanty towns over there, sir. Well, see, that's where you're almost wrong. all. Of Not all of us live in the projects. I've got a passport. Sir, I've traveled to the U.S. I've traveled to Canada. I've traveled sir, to Europe. Not as a flea. Sir, I'm back you're in not going to lie. You're not, sir. You're not going to lie. Y'all don't have any middle class black neighborhoods over there. That's according to you, though. You uh, no, according to facts, you don't have. What them. I was over there looking. Facts, though. You don't have middle class or well to do black neighborhoods over oh, there, sir. That's that's the truth, and you know it's the truth. If you did name them, Baba Tunde. <laughs> yeah, you better laugh it off. Name the black, name the wealthy black area over there in your homeland in South Africa. Name, name any them. wealthy, proudly black na neighborhoods in America that weren't built by yeah. the white man. I mean, man, most of these towns, LA was founded by black people. Black people building this town initially. A lot of the cities in the country, we were the ones who were first settling these places, sir. We're the foundation of this country, so literally. No, you're not. Yes, we are. No, yeah. White daddy, white mommy and white daddy failed when they tried to do it on their own. So who else did it but us? We did it, sir. That's us, sir. Foundational black Americans. And we still enjoy some of the wealth. We we don't live in shanty towns, sir. We don't oh, live man. in um, Tariq, we don't, Tariq, we don't live you're in lame. We just we like live, to hear the we, sound of your own voice. Everything No 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 no. We don't live in cargo containers, sir. Y'all live in cargo containers over there, sir, while the white people are right across the street in a condo. Y'all live in cardboard houses, though. Your houses are built out of cardboard. No, we don't. Yes, no, do. we yes, don't. Do. no, we don't. No, we don't. No, we yes, don't. Yes, you sir. do. You can hear You're your neighbor doing anything and everything uh, uh, next door. Yes, you do. You're projecting your fantasies, sir. That's your fantasies. You're projecting your failure onto us. We don't live like that in any sense of the word. Anyway, man, foundational black Americans do not exist. Just deal with it. Yeah, uh, well, how how we we're, how we invisible? We we do exist. Sir. It's, it's a figment of your own imagination. There is no such thing as a foundational black a American. A figment of the, you, what you are, don't exist. All, is what what, 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 don't, what, don't, what don't what don't exist is black wealth in your homeland. You all imports. that don't exist. You are all shipped as cargo to the United States. You're not foundational at all. Oh, no, stop it, sir! All of us weren't shipped. Some of us were already here, sir. This is our land. We are the foundation of this land, sir. This is our land. But you cannot your land over there. Ancestors prior to four hundred years, you have no existence in America prior to four hundred years, sir. You don't, sir. You don't know your birthday now. All right, most of y'all don't have birthdays because okay. you don't have birth certificates. Y'all make up a date. All right, y'all don't even. Well, you know, no, no, don't play that game. You don't even know your birthday now. Track your ancestry no, lineage no, prior to 400 years and tell me you're foundational. And tell me what yours is. Well, tell me what yours is. I am a proud from, Zulu man. Uh, My history is documented. No one can argue with it. Even the British, stop, even the stop, British know our history. Stop. You guys don't know. Nobody stop. can vouch for your own history, for your you history. Don't, you don't. Y'all don't have birth certificates, sir. Oh, man. 
That's according to So you. you don't know you don't know your history. You don't have birth certificates, sir. You have no culture, you have and no identity. Also, You're wanting to be everything also, and anything but African. Your culture identity, your cultural and you're in South Africa. You speak Key Swahili. I don't speak Swahili Mostly. in South Africa. Let read a book. Uh, yes, y'all do. Read, read a book. We don't speak Swahili. Yes. Swahili is an East African. Yes, yes, we, no, we don't. No, but y'all do speak Swahili. Nobody speaks now. Swahili in South Africa. Read a book. Yes, you do. No, we don't. Yes. You speak Term. English and Ebonics. That's about it. We don't speak Swahili. You speak Swahili and clicks and pops. Yes, we speak Kosa. Yes, we speak Zulu, but we do not speak right. Swahili. Speak Neither do we speak Ebonics. Sir, you speak clicks. Yes, sir, over there, you speak clicks and pops. You speak English. And That's it. You only speak English. Sir. That's your language. Sir, I, clicks and pops. I that's not a flex. Okay. It is a flex. Most South Africans are, are multilingual. You only speak English. And shout out to my South African brothers and sisters. I, I love you, but the clicks and pops is not a flex. Nobody sir. loves you though. Fuck off. No, no, I'm not gonna fuck off Bobby Tunde. You fuck off with that bush meat you gotta eat over there. That's what you gotta fuck off. Fuck off with your okay? meat. Yes, that's what you ate. Cool meat with kangaroo feet and llama ass. That's what you got to eat. You barbecuing that bush meat over there in your shipping container. Mad at foundational black Americans. Don't be mad at us because you failed, sir. And the white people are right across the street eating filet mignon and you're eating a barbecued meerkat. You're still, you're mad you're at still us. eating grits and raccoon meat. So what? We, we, we never ate that, sir. We eat good over here. We eat good. So anyway. I'm Baba Tunde. Let me let you go sweep up your shipping container because I know you got company coming over with some fresh bush meat in the morning for breakfast. All right, you have a good anyway. one, Tariq, and your shipping. All right, all right, all right, Baba Tunde. All right. You know, you're not going to sit up here and you're wallowing in filth and you got something to say about us. No, you don't. Like, I ain't been over there hearing them clicks and pops with bush meat in your mouth. And you want to say something slick about us? No, you don't. You're not going to say anything about what we done built. And y'all over there, 90% of the population and 8% of the people smacking you around. They're over there living in condos and mansions. And you in a damn shipping container with some tiger paws getting barbecued on a grill. Man, please. You ought to be ashamed. Stand up against them white supremacists. You mad at us. Get mad at those boyers that's out there dominating you. All right, let me get some more people in here. Let's get um DT. I don't know what your name is. I can't pronounce your name. It's DT something. But we got almost 800 people in the room. D something, hop on. You got a bird in your thing. I don't know what your name is. I can't pronounce these weird letters, man. Yo, 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 brother Tyreek. It's differently abled. Uh, you, I'm from uh, East Africa, Kenya. Greetings. There you go. What's on your mind, brother? Uh, I just wanted to encourage the black Americans and um, focus on the issues at hand. Um, I, I do, I'm probably one of the people who sympathizes a lot with the struggle and um, I'm not here to be condescending or anything, just to ask guys to focus on issues because uh, as black Americans, I would say grow, growing up, I grew up with a lot of influence from hip hop, you know, uh, black American music and all that and I appreciate you guys. Um, I would say you are a very powerful nation if you could um, organize yourself and, you know, focus on the issues here. Okay, now are you getting things together over there in Kenya? Yeah, yeah, we're trying, we're trying. Everything's fucked up, but uh, we push in spite of. I think we should have this mindset of uh, doing what we're supposed to do in spite of, you know, because in at the end of the day, you know, opposition and uh, downfalls, they're all, all going to be there. So, yeah, you know what I mean? All right. All right. Well, thank you so much, brother. All right. Well, y'all get it together over there in Kenya. Now, who is this guy? Kalish? Kalish. Khalees, yeah, this is a, kind of a weird little sassy guy who <laughs> wants 
making little sick comments about me. What's with that little sassy stuff? I'm I'm, where you I'm sassy, but you're the one with Beijing in your hair. Um, well, sir, so that's, I, that's from your mama's vagina. Well, that's from your mama's, mama's vagina. Deceased, you know, it's all good. I appreciate that. Um, and, and and dead pussy is best. I pussy. bet it is. I bet it is. I bet that's what you yeah. fuck since your wife is. And she wife. died, and, and, and she and she died because she had a sassy, moist son with his bussy spread open. So that killed her. But go ahead. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, it makes sense because your wife isn't even black. So, like you were saying about oh, South Africa, black enough. Seventeen thousand enough millionaires in South Africa. It's not. They're not living in huts. Like you said, you're so fucking condescending when it comes to Africans. What's and, seven thousand million? Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. What, how many thousand millionaires in South Africa? What you talking about, little moist thing? What you talking about? Seventeen thousand million. What, what? Who? What? What you talking about? Out of all of Africa, the most millionaires are in South Africa. There are black millionaires in South Africa. They don't live in huts. They don't eat I didn't. meat in the bush. I don't know why you're, you know, we, we have the internet That's a nowadays. Lie. But you, this no, is no, not. No, 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 you're not going to go here lying. Now, what, what family member of yours is from South Africa? Your dad, your mom, who's from South Africa? Because you're not going to sit here and lie. Who's from South Africa in your family? Little sassy boy. What, what? Who's from South Africa in your family? You're not going to get your ass up here and lie. I'm not lying. You can ask anybody. I was waiting for the last okay. brother. You can Google okay. it. Okay. What part, you of, can what Google part of South it. Africa? Most millionaires What's, out of all what of, part Africa? of South Africa. I'm, dude, this ain't a little Nas X concert. You just don't go in and just pull your pants down and just try to get some action. There's decorum here. Okay, I ask you, what part of South, who's in South Africa, who's from South Africa in your family? You got a South African flag. So is it your mom or your dad? Because you sound like an anchor baby. So is your mom or your dad from South Africa? Because I'm, I'm going to get to your lies in a minute. I'm just trying to establish the type of person we're dealing with here. Now, you're a South African Anchor baby, somebody came over here and anchored your little moist self over here, right? You can literally Google it. 17,300 black millionaires in South Africa. So when you say they're in a bush eating meat, and sir, they eat bush meat over there in those townships. Most of the black people over there are, but you're in still townships. disregarding what I said. No, don't because no, 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 because you're not gonna sit here and paint a fake picture. The majority of the people over there who are black, you are talking to them, damn steps. That's the reality. They're pushed into townships over there, and they're living in shanty towns, in shipping containers, and they're out there cooking bush meat every day. I saw it with my own eyes. You're not gonna tell me what I did. You can see. literally Google because I know you have a phone, sir. You can literally Google this. This is statistics. This is facts. I'm not talking out my ass. Out of all of Africa, South Africa. Okay, you didn't say the same thing. Yes, so okay, I'm so saying when you name, come on here and name say the, stuff name like the community, that. Name, name the communities. Name the wealthy black communities in South Africa. Okay, you done repeated all of these thousands of millionaires. So you tell me, you keep muting me. You're uh, not letting me answer. Okay, because you're saying Johannesburg. The same thing like a woman. I said it when you muted me. Okay, stop it, Johann. Stop you it. can Google it. This is not coming from me, sir. Dude, it's facts, and I know Pittsburgh has a bunch of slums in them. Yeah, so does L.A. Talking? I live in L.A., and it's still millionaires there just because. Okay. Okay, now in LA, I can tell you the area where there are black millionaires. I can tell you the black community where there are well to do black people. There are Baldwin Hills. You have certain pockets of the valley where you have a lot of black people where I live who are well to do. Yes. Now, so tell the me area is in South Africa, in South Africa, in Johannesburg, name the area of Johannesburg where you have a community Sanson. of wealthy black people. It's called Sanson, and you can Google it. What's it Sandton, called? Sandton, S A N D T O N. It's the richest square mile in Africa. 
Hold on. We're looking that up now. But you can look up, and I can put it in the comments. It's 17,300 black Santo, millionaires no, no, okay, in South well, Africa. Stanton, that's the place where the white people live. It's white and black, just like Calabasas. Right. You so can say, oh, it's white you're people being there. Dis, you're being it's, I'm not being dishonest. It's... Dude, it's that's a white rich. area. That's a that's a that's an area where rich white people live, dude. That's an area of rich white people. See how guys try to be very disrespectful here. You think? And it's a lot of British people. I'm, I'm looking at some of the people from there. Sir Donald Gordon. It's a British guy. There's a Johnny Allen. These are rich white people who live over there. Sir, you tried to be deceptive. This is what I'm saying. I've been over there. I've seen what's over there. There are no well-to-do black areas over there, sir. Who you, you you ain't talking to somebody who ain't been over there. That that don't work here, sir. Santin is a white area, sir. I'm trying to screenshot it now. I'm going to put it in the comments Good for Lord. you because you can literally Wait, look oh. for yourself. Y'all sassy niggas be lying y'all asses off, boy. I swear to goodness. You can call me all the names. You can talk about my dead mother. Facts is facts. In real life, I yeah, beat your fucking ass sassy, for talking. Lying niggas is, and sassy lying niggas is sassy lying niggas. Don't be a statistic. Keep muting me, you bitch like ass nigga. Okay, don't, don't try to try and sound tough, nigga. Your pussy is whistling right now. Little old moist thing. You're not going to bust a grape, so don't try to get your chest up out. Yeah, come on now. Stop it. You a fuck boy. Stay in the fuck boy's place. Nigga, suck my dick on my dead mother, <laughs> you, you bitch ass nigga. Fuck lie. you. Yo, yeah, yeah. Shut up, little sassy thing. Shut up, little sassy thing. You're sitting up there getting your toes done. All right. You're, you're the least convincing thug ever. I'm with not your moist a moist ass. Yeah, stop trying to talk like one fuck nigga. All right. With your lying ass. Your little lying anchor baby tether. All right. So don't you play that game. Don't you try to sound tough. You got caught lying. All right? Which is what a lot of you tethers do. You sit around lying all the time. And jealous and mad of foundational black Americans. With your punk ass. Anyway, any last words? Cause I got to get some more people on here. I know you got to go ahead and lay it with Zaddy. I'm going to put it what in else the you comments say? so people can see the truth for themselves. That's it. Okay, get your moist lying ass out of here. He gonna sit up here and name a white town over there. Ain't <laughs> number white people over there. <laughs> lying ass tether. Dude, family, I done been over there. And I listen, I love my South African brothers and sisters. I love them. You got some great people over there, man. Great people. But what you're not gonna do is come over here and sell us some Wakanda bullshit. It ain't. There are no well-to-do black neighborhoods over there. Dude, I was all over that place looking for some well-to-do black areas, just a middle-class black area. And the majority of the black folks over there are funneled into these little janky shanty towns and townships over there where they're living in shacks and shipping containers. And the white people are living in mansions and condos, literally right across the street. And that's the reality. That's a harsh reality. You understand? And I say that with love. Brothers and sisters over there need to fix that. That should have been rectified a long time ago. Yeah, but don't let these people sit up here and talk about all these millionaires here and millionaires there. And yeah, millionaires are white. In East Indian, you know what I'm saying? The British, yeah, you got a whole bunch of non native millionaires over there, yeah. But yeah, you're not gonna sell that, dude. I went over there, I couldn't even find a black owned restaurant. We're trying to get traditional South African food from the natives. I think we couldn't find a black owned restaurant over there. We were looking all over, just little things, dude. Come on, man. And I, I, I love my South African brothers and sisters, but man, I don't know what the deal is with y'all over there letting all that shit go down and you're the majority. You're like 90% of the people over there. Okay? And then this anchor baby is going to call up and try to sell some wolf tickets. Nah. 
Let's get Kamal in here. Let's get Kamal. Mr. Kamal, hop in. Mr. Kamal? Uh, give me a second. Uh, can you hold on for a second? I'll be right there. Okay, okay this dude, you can't fry bush meat while I'm live, man. If you're going to do that, just call me back, man. Damn. He's sitting up there frying some jackal right. wings. Hey, hey, I'm ready. I'm ready. So, uh, Okay, brother. Yeah, how you okay. doing, sir? So, I'm good. You over there, you seasoning that bush meat right now? What you want, bro? <laughs> yo, yo. Uh, so I'm, I'm actually a civilizing man of Ethiopian and a Somali descent. So uh, we don't go. Oh, oh. So that, so that means you eat your, you eat your bush no, meat no, with some injera bread. No, we, we, we Ethiopians and Somalis, we're a little more civilized than that. But uh, unfortunately, uh, I got to say something about those brothers over there in, uh, in South Africa. They, uh, you know, Ethiopia and Somalia played a big role in in, in, in during the, the times when they were under the white minority, white rule. But uh, they have not been, uh, now that Somalia has been in a civil war for the longest, this brought a lot of Somalis, uh, for your information, na the natural traders of the Somali nation is spread from all the way from southern Somalia all the way. Okay. Okay, brother. All right. I, I can't really understand what he's saying. Okay. Yeah, I couldn't understand what he's saying. Let's get a love. Let's get love in here. <laughs> That's hilarious. What's up, Miss Love? Hey, I just woke up and I'm in here. And in the midst of you talking, I'm listening, but I'm also scrolling. And then I just saw this Ethiopian shoemaking uh factory for the Chinese and I just had an epiphany that prompted me to raise my hand. These people get on my motherfucking nerves. I'm having I'm tired of looking at how weak all of this is looking. They're getting pushed around by some five foot tall Asians. What is going on? You're the majority. I don't I don't get it. It's annoying to us. <laughs> That's really the issue is that it annoys the fuck out of us and we keep having to see it and we're a minority. Here. We're not the most here. And I just don't understand. Right. Thank you. Thank you, dear. Yeah, yeah, man. We, you know, a lot of the stuff ain't fathomable to us because we're like, man, if we were the majority, if we were the majority, we ain't... We're the minority. We ain't living in shanty towns. And people talk about the projects. Most of us don't know projects. And hell, the projects don't even look like none of the stuff over there. The projects don't look like that over there. And that's only a very small percentage of us who live in the damn projects. Most of us live in homes. We got family homes, especially in the South, that our family built. How many of y'all got great grandparents or grandparents in the South or a house that was built by your granddad or your great granddad. If y'all got Southern roots, y'all got a house somewhere in the South. That's a family home that your great granddad or granddad built. That's still around that the family still go to in the South. You understand? We got that. You know, we, we, we don't do the shanty town thing. We, we don't do that. We we ain't living like that, and I, and I, I'm not saying that to be disrespectful to the brothers and sisters, but yeah, cats ain't gonna call up here trying to wag their finger to us about what we need to do. Man, you FBA niggas have not built nothing, and you sitting up here in a shipping container, you know, boiling a damn bunny rabbit that you about to make some bunny rabbit chili dogs out of. Yeah, come on now. No. Uh, let me get some more folks in here. We got a lot of people in here. And speaking of musty, I hope everybody got their root work deodorant at rootworkstyle.com. I hope y'all got that. Rootworkstyle.com. And the groper did. Burrito groper, you always try to get on, man. You don't really have anything to say. Burrito groper, hop on. You always try to get on. And you never really have anything to say. Burrito Groper Hop on, man. Hey, yeah. So uh check this out. Cobb. Linda Cobb, am I correct? Is your mother-in-law. 
and Linda. I don't know who Linda Cobb is. No. Well, her last name is Cobb or something like that. Your mother in law. Okay. Okay, so you don't have any material. You're just saying stuff. Groper. So is she like Jewish? Groper, 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 Groper. You need to get some wheels on your trailer, okay? Stop worrying about what foundational Black Americans are doing. Get Would some. Your get your tires. Ro- get half your Jewish? tires rotated. Get your tires rotated on your trailer, sir. All right, because your tires are wobbling all over the trailer park. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Well, the white supremacists have no material. Okay. Hey, Dr. Davinsky, speaking of white supremacists, one of the OG me and him be going back and forth. This is Dr. Davinsky. He's an Australian white supremacist. He's out there in the down under. What's up, Mr. Davinsky? Salam alaikum, Tariq. Wat Dawa. How we doing tonight? Um, good, good. Can good. I get a Wat Dawa? White... Um, I don't know what what white what's powerful in white. What, what's powerful in white? Creating the civilized world. Give you know the microphone you speak through the technology. The um, the uh, the modern microphone was created by a black man, and the only thing that's powerful in white. I think white you is created the dog. flying machine. I saw a meme. Uh, my my FBA brother Trey told me that the flying machine was painted by the uh, the blacks. Is this true? Um, yeah, before the Wright brothers, yeah, we were in, in engaging in aircraft development before the Wright brothers. But, you know, that's how we do I have a serious, I have a serious topic we need to talk about, though. I've noticed a lot of black Americans are very pro-Palestine. And I've heard that you're married to a Jewess. Is this true? Your wife is Jewish. Um, because you guys don't have any material... This is why you're failing, sir. You you guys don't have any material, and you have to reduce yourself to lying and trolling. No, no, that's I, the thing. I, with you. Are you married to a Jew? Is this misinformation, sir? Sir, sir, you know good and well that I have a foundational Black American woman, sir. But is she Jewish? You know that, uh, sir. You know good and well that my wife is not Jewish and there's nothing wrong with a Jewish person. What's wrong with that? If she was Jewish, what would be wrong with well, that? Well, nothing. You know, I just ordered a caramel frappuccino from Starbucks because we've got to support small business. What's happening right now is that we caught in these small businesses like Coca-Cola and Starbucks, these pro-Palestine people. And- okay. Let me get some more people. I, these white supremacists, because they don't really have any material, they just start saying weird goofy stuff that ain't even funny he's trying to be witty i'm ozzy from sydney um yes sir go ahead. he's talking shit um yes. yeah he's talking a lot of shit and he he needs yeah take a step back because his ass is on fucking fire um yes it is all right He's talking about booties on fire. But yeah, these white supremacists, they, my, my, my guy, Mikhail, is making a great point. They, they always want us to step in with their issue with Jewish people. You notice that that's kind of a little cowardly thing with the Anglo white supremacists. They're always trying to drag us into their little internal beef with Jewish people. They want us to protect them from their perceived Jewish threat. They always want us in the mix. Again, these people always try to drag us into their little beefs because you're you're too cowardly to fight on your own and stand up to folks on your own. You always want to drag us into it. Calling up talking about somebody's Jew. Is your wife Jewish? No, dude, that's, that's your conflict. You're always projecting some Jewish fear that you guys have. The the, the white Jews community got y'all at white supremacists shook. They must be powerful on you, white supremacists. They be whooping your ass. They got y'all so scared and shook. Oh, you know, black daddy, come save us. You know, black daddy's not going to save you from nobody. 
Yeah, you know, stop trying to drag us into the mix to, to save you. All right, let's get some more people in here. Let's get, um, what's this guy? Kalistan? Kalistan, whatever his name is. Mr. Kalistan. Okay, you got any more material? All right. But well, that really wasn't offensive. You're just proving that you're a white supremacist. Yeah, it's not offensive to us. We don't really trip on you yelling nigga, nigga, nigga over and over. That that doesn't really hit. It didn't hit like you thought it was going to hit. Right? That did not hit like you thought it was, huh? And we kind of kind of used to you being white supremacists. That's nothing new. So you running around yelling the N-word. Uh, okay. You just prove what we already knew. All right. And you're you're making sounds like your your mom is when the the Negro gardener is in there doing it. That's the same shit. That's that's what she's yelling back and forth. When the black plumber comes in there draining them pipes. <laughs> All right. Let's see who else we got. All right. We got a lot of people in here. Let's see. Um, let's get Saed Hussein. Saed Hussein, and then we'll get um, who else? All right, Saed. Wait, wait, can you Syed hear me? Can you hear me, bro? I can hear you. Yo, I always, I, can hear you. I always wanted to talk to you, man. I finally met you. All right, here but, I am. So, what's so, ba so, so basically, I was going to ask, after the reparations, what next? I'm not, not in a bad way, in a good way. What next is we keep living. Life doesn't stop. The world doesn't end. We keep doing what we do. We go to work every day. We take our children to school. We build the economy. We, we stimulate the economy. We start businesses. So, um, so does white, does we get white, on the road of real healing uh, and a real racial reckoning, and it starts with writing that check, and then we can get on the road to a real racial reckoning. So that that's going to be the first step to a a glorious future. Right. Also, why do you expect your enemies to give you money? Because when our enemies take money, they're supposed to give it back. You understand? Okay. When you commit a crime, listen, listen. When people commit crimes and they go to court and they get convicted for those crimes, they have to pay restitution. You understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same thing. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Anyway, bro. Um also no, that's that's about it. That's about it. Anyway, have a nice day, friend. Have a nice day, bro. Thank you so much. All right. Yeah, that whole thing. Why did we expect our enemies to give us money? Yeah, it's called restitution. Yeah. We know this is not a a friendly gesture we're engaging in. This is something that's very serious, and we're taking it very seriously. And we understand the hostilities behind it. And we we have hostilities because <clears throat> excuse me, a wrong was done to us, and it's still being done, and it hasn't been rectified. So we're like, we need the paper. We don't care if you're an open enemy. Yeah, enemy, give me my money, enemy. Yeah, that's what it is. When criminals commit crimes, they don't want to give the money back, but they have to give it back. You got to pay restitution. Same thing. All right. Man, we are in here heavy, but let me get out of here because I've been on here for a long time. Everybody, will you go to rootworkstyle.com? and get the root work deodorant, phenomenal deodorant. Also, you can watch the movie Buck Breaking on Amazon Prime. You can stream it right now. If you have Amazon Prime, in fact, you can watch it for free if you have Amazon Prime. So you go to amazon.com, watch the cult classic film called Buck Breaking. It's a great historic piece if you have not seen it. See that movie on Amazon Prime right now. It's a phenomenal, phenomenal movie. All right, y'all, I'm up out of here. 
Um, Puppy Akute, Lola Vuve to the family. Peace. From the culture of the American South, where roots hold stories, comes a natural deodorant inspired by generations of wisdom. Introducing Root Work, the all-natural foundational Black American-based deodorant infused with the magic of High John the Conqueror root. Our unique blend enriched with this legendary root offers 24-hour protection rooted in the power of nature. Embrace this deodorant that celebrates culture, history, and your well-being. Unlock the magic of root work today. Experience the pure essence of nature. Visit rootworkstyle.com and make the switch to a healthier cultural choice.